by the Martians to destroy the human race. The FBI is helpless, it's plenty story told. What can we do, who can we call? Special Agent Frady of Metropolitan International Crime Prevention Headquarters and some vicious criminals. It was really a routine assignment in the war on crime. And Special Agent Frady had no idea how important this one incident would become. I, the robot, now known as Eighth Man, was Special Agent Frady. And I had no idea that a new life was to start for me as a result of this gun battle. policemen stop us i've got an idea of how to set a trap for them that's a swell idea sounds good boss oh. don't shoot agent brady i don't want to die i give up move forward slowly where's your two pals saucer lip those two cowards left me to shoot it out alone with you they scrammed. What happened to all the money you stole from the bank? I don't know what happened to it. When those two cowards chickened out and took off, I guess they took it all with them. That's a good story, but not good enough. I'm taking you to headquarters to see Chief Bumblebob. street my life as special agent brady was coming to an end who could have guessed that this was both an end and a beginning that while my existence as brady was rapidly draining out of my broken body a whole new life was soon to open for me with a new body one more powerful than any the world had ever known. I am Professor Genius. I don't know if it was a dream that led me to that dark street on that particular night, or was it the hand of destiny? He's dead. But he's so young. I'll take him to the lab. Perhaps I can give him a new life. I picked up the young man's body and carried it to my car. It was a long ride to my laboratory outside the city, and I had plenty of time to think. To think about many years of hard work and a dream. A dream that I had long cherished. That of giving a new body to an existing mind. But more than simply the powerful body, I plan to transfer all the existing thoughts, emotions, and knowledge in the human brain to an electronic one that would be virtually indestructible. Therefore, having a robot with human emotional and moral attributes. My laboratory came into view. Soon, I would know. I haven't got much time. I'll have to hurry. Everything
testing set. Here it goes. Now we'll see if my electric play machine works. Or if it is just a dream. I hope it works for his sake. He is too young to die. And he won't have to die. Not really. All goes well. The overhead invigorator is functioning. His body is beginning to react. The instruments all beat properly. Very good. Ah, everything's working perfectly. All systems A-OK. -okay. At last, my dream is becoming a reality. The priceless life force in that fine young body is responding just as I expected. The invigorator is taking that force, enlarging it and transferring it electronically to the new form. Good. Is absorbing the invigorator waves. Then it's almost done. And now for the final crucial step. <laughs> I did it. He's alive. A victory for science. My greatest achievement. Well, my young friend. How do you feel now? I feel okay, but what in the world is this all about? Do you know who you are? Special Agent Brady. Young man, this experiment is a fantastic success. Wait a minute. What experiment? Tell me, why am I dressed like this? I don't understand what's going on. You were killed. You were run over by a car. Killed? I'm not dead. All right, mister, if this is your idea of a practical joke, I don't like it. I'm not joking. There's your body. What? It is me, isn't it? How very strange I look there. What in the world have you done with me? I don't understand it. Here I am dead and cold, and yet... Here I am alive and warm. Am I going crazy or something? I'll explain it. I saved your life, but I couldn't save your body. Your body was too badly damaged by the accident to save. With my electric wave machine, I was able to restore your life and transfer it to the body you now have. Do you understand? You are now a robot and no longer a human being. You will never be any different. You had no right to do this. I did at the time what I thought was best for you. That isn't my face and I don't like it one bit. Everything I did was for your sake, young man. For my sake, you say, without asking, you put me into a body entirely different from my own. I'll be unhappy for the rest of my life. I do not intend to spend it as a robot for you or for anyone else. Do you understand me? But it's impossible to do anything about it, my boy. You've got to figure out something to do, and right now. That table, I smashed it with my fist. I smashed the steel table to pieces. I can't believe it. I must have the power of 1,000 men. You are 10,000 times more powerful than any man that ever lived. Here is a drawing of your new body and how it works. You are different now in many ways, as you shall see. First, you have a microatomic generator in place of a heart, which gives you superhuman endurance. You have an electronic brain that solves any problem in a millionth part of a second. You can think 100 times faster than a human being. This bat will illustrate another of your powers. I'll release him. Now, listen carefully. Can you hear anything? Yes. This bat is almost blind. Yet he can fly safely with no fear of collision because he has a supersonic radar. You can hear the sonic waves from the bat's radar. No human being can hear them. But your electronic hearing apparatus is so finely tuned that you can pick up absolutely any sound wave. Now then, catch that bat for me, would you? There he is, right up there. That's impossible. I'd have to fly. That's right, you would. And you can. Focus your brain on launching yourself into the air. While you'll move so fast, the bat will seem to stand still. Your anti-gravity unit will do the rest. Try it. I got it. Of course you did. You can fly faster than the speed of light if you wish. Here are diagrams of yours and a normal human body. You're on the left. 
Those moving lines illustrate how much faster than the human your brain transmits impulses through your body. Why, you can move fast enough to catch a bullet in midair. You look doubtful. Try moving around this room. It's unbelievable. There's one more thing. I'll turn off the lights. Look around the room. Do you see anything? I see everything clearly. Even you. That's right. You can see in complete darkness. Now imagine yourself anyone you wish. Okay. As you think of a face, your special plastic skin assumes the appearance you imagine. <laughs> now remember, because you have superior powers, you take on extra responsibilities to mankind. You must pledge yourself to use your great power only for the good of humanity. You must be a champion of law and order. Will you make this pledge? I'll take that pledge with all my heart. But where can I find help if I need it? Come and see me because I'm the only person that can help you. I am Professor Genius and I will always be ready to assist you. But nothing should go wrong if you follow the instructions I will give you. I will call you Eight Man because you are my eighth experiment and greatest contribution to mankind. Eight Man it is then. Very good. Now we must give you a new name and face for the outside world. There they will know you as Tobor. That's robot spelled backwards. Ah, you have created an excellent face for yourself. These look like cigarettes, but they are super energy boosters. Use one if you ever need it. Always keep them with you, and if you need more, just let me know. Use them only when you need extra power. I understand. Remember, your power must be a secret between you and me. This knowledge in the wrong hands could cause great trouble in the world. Good luck, Eighth Man. Thank you, Professor. I assumed an appearance that was much like my former self before I became a robot. I found it a little difficult to adjust to the whole idea of that word, robot, for indeed, as the professor had planned, I had all the emotions of a human being. When I read about my own murder and learned that my former boss, Chief Bumble Thumbs of Metropolitan International, was hot on saucer lips trail, I decided to try out my new powers in an independent search for my own killer. At first, the little puppy that I had rescued tried to be friendly. But the strangeness of my robot body frightened him away. I realized then that my new life would be a lonely one. Meanwhile, back at Metro International Headquarters, my old boss, Chief Bumble Thumbs, renewed his determination to bring Saucer Lips to justice. All right, men, it's time you get on the ball. I want those killers caught, and I want them caught right away. Is that clear? Now, listen to me. Gotta catch that gang now. With all that money, they're probably a long way out of town by now. I hope the chief didn't hear that. He wants those crooks caught, and he won't listen to any excuses from anybody. Catch those crooks, or I'll have your heads, all of you. I'm so tired. Now there's a ringing in my ears. Oh, chief. Oh, of course it's the phone. Bumble Thumbs here. Yeah? Uh-huh. What's that? You're chasing Saucer Lips now on Route 1 right now? Stick with him, do you hear me? Into your cars, everyone. Officer O'Day is chasing Saucer Lips on Route 1. Hurry! This might be our last chance to catch him. Now get going! <laughs> Don't stand there! Get 
me a car. One is enough. It's time for Ape Man. <laughs> Better get out of here. Get him, man. Gotta get away. Gotta get away. Gotta get away. I tell you and you'll be all right. Remember that, sister, for your own good, understand? Oh, you're Sosalit. <gasps> That's right. I'm the meanest, toughest gangster in the country. <gasps> oh. I'm gonna use you for protection. See you get away this time, Sorcerer. We've got you now. That's what you think, funny face. Let me go or I'll blast the girl. Now get out of my way. I'm going to have to let him go. If I don't, he's sure to kill the girl. Well, then let him go if you have to, Chief. But he won't get very far away this time. Get out of my way. I'm leaving. Get out of my way!
You got him. You did it. I don't know how you did it, but you saved that girl's life and caught this crook. But, but you look just like Special Agent Brady. You're a ghost. You're Brady's ghost. No, I'm not. Then you must be a brother to Brady. This is the man who killed him, you know. Oh, I wish I hadn't seen you, because it's all so confusing. So, from now on, I call you Tobor. That's robot spelled backwards, isn't it? That was an amazing story you just told me. Yes, it's really unbelievable. But every word is true. I'll keep your secret. And who is this? You remember Jenny Hartsweet, the girl we saved from the saucer lips? Hello. She's my secretary now. Well, I must be going. Thanks for the coffee. So long. Good luck. Mr. Tobor. This call is from a client who wants to speak to you about something important right away. Tobor here? Yes, of course. Right away. And so, I had put myself at the service of law and order. Working closely with the global fund of Metro International Crime Prevention, my life's work was cut out for me. My adventures would prove to be more exciting than it is possible to imagine. And you shall see.